Hello, this is Eric Wamsley, Systems Engineer with Nutanix. Today's video is to go over a feature that's actually been around since AOS and Prism Central 5.5, but it's only recently started to get utilized by customers and it's gotten really powerful. And that is categories. Categories are a way to identify objects inside of a similar group. You can actually see on the screen right here, I'm on the categories view, and there's a couple of default categories like application type, application tier, or environment. Good example of a category would be things like the environment one there in the middle. You can categorize your VMs as production, dev, test, pre-prod, staging, things like that. You can also categorize hosts. So if you have a cluster or a set of hosts that you want to categorize, as an environment, as an ownership or a department, you can do that. To get to categories, inside of Prism Central, on the top left, click the menu icon, go to Virtual Infrastructure, and then click on Categories. You can also click the star to make it show up in the Home menu. And then once you click Categories, it'll bring you back to that same screen we were on, listing all of the available categories. We're going to focus on application type and app tier categories in this video. Let's first take a look at app type so you can see what some of the defaults are. Inside of app type, after we click it, you can see there's Exchange, Hadoop, Kubernetes, SQL Server, Oracle. So this is where you define your actual applications, whether this is an EMR, a CMR, whether it's some sort of homegrown app or banking application, the actual name of the app should go in here. Let's go ahead and create a new application type. Click the update button on the top right. And then in the text box in the bottom of the screen, put in the name of your application. The name of my app just happens to be Pharaoh, so I'll put in Pharaoh and then hit save. Before we go on to the next step of actually making our app tiers, let's actually take a look at the VMs in my application. So in my view here, you can see that my Pharaoh app has a couple different tiers, right? So I've got the app tier, I've got a database, a couple database servers, a few web servers, and then I've got some HA proxies. So we're gonna to have to make a couple tiers for all these different applications. Let's go back to categories. Then click on app tier. And then you can see we don't have any app tiers. So let's hit update. And once that loads, click the plus button on the right side. And then let's go ahead and type in app, DB, web, load balancer, and put all those tiers in there. And just hit the plus each time when you want to add the next tier. Gotta add my web, and then the load balancer. Some people like to put the names of their applications before the tiers. So like for the example that I just put in, you could have done Pharaoh underscore app, Pharaoh underscore DB, things like that. There's not really a limit to how many categories you can make or app tiers, but I kind of like to make things easy. So you can re actually reuse your app tiers, for example, a lot of applications have web servers or DB servers or app servers. You don't have to put in app for every single time you add a new app type. So if you have application one and then you assign a app tier of app and web, like I have here, you're good. Then you add another application like Pharaoh or your EMR. Those can also have app or web types but you don't have to come in and rename them every single time or add special names every single time just for that application. But you are welcome to, if it helps your organization strategically plan and use the app types and app tiers that are available through this functionality.
When we're done here, go ahead and hit the Save button, and we'll go back to our Categories page. You can see that actually my app, DB, and other tiers have loaded. It's on the top row. Now the fun part is to actually assign categories to your objects. Remember an object can be like a VM, it can be an image, it can be a host, it can be a cluster. So let's go ahead and look at my Faro applications again, and we'll start assigning categories to them. And it's fairly easy to do, so go ahead and just go to your virtual machines. And when you're looking at that inventory, just check the boxes next to the VMs that you want to assign a category or multiple categories to. And then check the box for actions and do manage categories. Once you're managing categories, you can just search for whichever category you're looking for. And it doesn't have to be any specific ones, right? So you see I type in Pharaoh and it automatically detects it. I can type in app and I can see my app type. And then just hit the save button and then iterate through the rest of your VMs that you want to assign the categories for. And this is where you could also assign categories for things like environment. So if it was going to also be categorized as prod or pre-prod, you could do that here. So again, remember just to check your VMs, go to actions, and then go down to manage categories and just type in the names of the categories you want. If you're not sure what your names are, you can actually just type in like app type or app tier and it'll list all the ones that are available for you. And again, just hit save. This is for my Faro DB servers. Then we'll do the same thing for my web real quick. So again, just check your web servers, go up to actions, and I apologize for my very slow computer. It's about time for me to get a new one. Because it seems to not be able to handle recording video and using a web browser at the same time. It is 2019. Okay. I hit manage categories. Again, type in Faro. Select the web after hitting the plus button one more time and hit save and then lastly I need to add my load balancers so that would be unchecking the two web servers and then check the boxes for my HA proxy servers go to actions manage categories Type in Faro, hit the plus button, and then type in load balancers and select load balancer, and then hit save. Now with the categories assigned, we can actually go back and look at all of our categories. So if we go to the menu, virtual infrastructure, virtual infrastructure and categories, or since I've favored it, just click categories. Then you can see I have my nine VMs that are assigned to the categories. You can actually click on them. And then you see that like, hey, my load balancers have been tagged and you can click them and it'll actually filter for you and show you, hey, these two HA proxy VMs are assigned to the load balancer category. Or you can get even better. You can actually create some custom views. So if we go to the app type, click on the nine VMs for my Faro app. And once that loads up on the top search menu on the left side, you can actually just hit the favorite button which is a star and it'll actually save it so that it's a view that you can access quickly so if this is a group of VMs that you access all the time it'll show up right there under the dashboard so now I can click that and it'll take me to the Faro applications anytime I want and you can do this based on any category so if you want to have prod VMs test dev or if you have a department say like HR um, IT that's probably a bad example. HR, legal, things like that. They can have their own filters, so it's easy for them to access virtual machines. From here, it makes sense to go ahead and make any other app types and app tier categories that you want. Any custom categories or editing any of these other system-defined categories. 
After you've made all your categories and signed them to objects like clusters and VMs, you can actually go in and edit policies for things like security policies, backup and replication policies, and other protection policies like that. Which means that categories and policies basically go hand in hand. It gets you away from managing individual virtual machines, so you no longer have to define a backup policy or backup schedule for an individual virtual machine. You can say everything that's defined as my environment production and has the app type of Faro gets a one hour RPO and is replicated over to our DR site in Atlanta or something similar. I'm going to explore in some future videos the ability to actually assign categories to security policies. This allows us to run micro segmentation or virtual firewalls for our environment based on those categories we just assigned. I hope this video was helpful for you to learn about categories inside of Nutanix. I appreciate you viewing it, and if you want to see more videos, either check out my YouTube channel or go to my personal website, ewoms.net. Thank you.